screencast on time value money. We're going to be spending an awful lot of time in time value money. It is essentially the absolute core of the course. Um, we're going to get you into the mathematics, uh, how to play with these kinds of items, and then we'll do some calculations. Mostly we'll do some loan calculations just to warm you up a little bit. And then later on we'll make some extremely you know, constant and consistent use of this material. Um, it is core. If you do not learn this, you will not do well for the rest of the course. So let's make sure that we absolutely positively focus on this. Now, what we're doing here is, is we're thinking about the future, and the thing I want you to keep in mind more than anything else is that the future is different from the present. You should almost think of it as different kinds of currency. You can't add together a dollar today with a dollar five years or now. They're not the same thing. It's trying to add U.S. dollars and Canadian dollars. You simply can't do it. Now, there's a couple reasons for this. One, we're just flat out impatient. We have a preference for wanting things now rather than later. And that's actually one of those rules of cash flows. Money now is better than money later. Certain money is better than risky money and don't run out of money. Um, but we are extremely impatient and that's why we do are willing to pay to get things now rather than later. And we have to be compensated for delaying our, these benefits. Second, we have an institution about called interest, and even if your culture doesn't necessarily have interest and prohibits the use of interest, there are institutions that act like interest. So we have it here as a rule. Now this probably has to do more with our impatience than anything else, but we do have this particular institution. And then finally, we have discounting or interest because of risk. You may want to go ahead and lend, lend me money but you want to be compensated for the possibility that I may die and not actually return it to you. You also want to be compensated for the possibility that you may die and you may never be able to enjoy the benefits of that money. So we're going to be looking at this because, again, we're making sure that we're valuing the future different from the present. Now in this class, we're going to be focusing on a specific kind of discounting, a specific way of making it so that the future shrinks down and becomes something smaller so we can compare it to the present. We're going to be focusing on exponential discounting. Um, it is mathematically simple. It works the same way that interest works. Uh, it provides consistent decision making, meaning you won't change your mind as time marches forward. But the trick is that this is in stark contrast to what you actually do in your gut which is something that's referred to as hyperbolic discounting. And I've given you some kind of functional form for hyperbolic discounting here, but the secret is that there's actually many different ways of expressing hyperbolic discounting. Now, again, these simple kinds of calculations that you know that you can do, um, but I want to show you what the differences between these two are in terms of shapes and what it means for decision making. So let's go ahead and start off with a couple of graphs. And so I'll start you off here with a, a vertical axis. We'll also get you a nice horizontal axis right here. And we're going to be measuring here on the horizontal axis is time. So we're going to have a measurement of when we are. And what we're going to be measuring on the vertical axis is going to be value within that particular time period. Now, I want you to go ahead and visualize two different values. One is a, is a rather large value indicated by this vertical distance that's quite some ways out here in the future. And we want to have another one which is a little bit smaller but nearer in time. There we go. And so again, in this particular time period when you receive it, the vertical distance indicates the value. In this time period when you receive it, the vertical distance receives its value. What we're doing with discounting is we're making it so that we can evaluate how much we like these things, knowing that they're going to be in the future. And so what I'm going to be doing is drawing you in this little function which expresses the value of these future benefits as you look forward to them. And so this is supposed to be a nice smooth curve and it's supposed to also express exponential discounting. So here we are on this particular day 
this vertical distance right here expresses how much we value this benefit out in the future, but how we v benefit value it on this particular day. I can do something similar here for this value, drawing in something like that. And so what you can see is that on this particular day, if you were to look forward, you would prefer to have this larger uh, benefit that's farther out in the future than this nearer one that's a little bit smaller. Now, exponential discounting gives you this kind of consistent discounting. If you see that something is uh, better at one point in time and you move forward in time, and you move forward in time, it still remains better. Now, what happens when you are dealing with hyperbolic discounting is that's not always true anymore. With hyperbolic discounting, there's a possibility of preference reversals. And so, to change around the diagram just a little bit, you may end up with something like this. Not necessarily horizontal right there, but the idea is that if you are observing these two values that you can have way out in the future, a big one further, and a smaller one nearer, you may initially go ahead and value this one that's far in the future. But as time moves forward and you get closer and closer and closer to having this near-term benefit, there becomes a point where you decide that you like that near-term benefit better. Now, admittedly, we've all done this. Um, anytime you've gone ahead and made the promise to yourself that you're going to study over the weekend for an exam, and then the weekend rolls around and you decide on Saturday it's a really good idea to go out with your friends, you know you've made a decision like that. Anytime that you've gone ahead and said, okay, I'm going to go ahead and put this purchase on a credit card and pay off the balance before the end of the month, and then it turns out you don't do it, you've gone again and, and, and actually made these kinds of time inconsistent choices. Again, this is a consequence of your guts being hyperbolic in nature. Now, this class is going to make it so your gut reactions are going to be more exponential and much less hyperbolic. Uh, and that's just a consequence of the class. Now, initially, a lot of your calculations aren't going to feel right because they're exponential discounting. And that's just because your gut reaction is going to be something that's always hyperbolic. Well, that should do it for the uh, intro to time discounting. Um, you'll have uh, another couple of screencasts on a, um, a verbal description of the assumptions of exponential discounting, and then we'll start doing some calculations.